Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Exceed Further slash Exceed Beyond to QuickBooks desktop demonstration. Today, I'm going to show you how to post a batch of donations from Exceed Beyond or Exceed Further into QuickBooks desktop. Now, there are three screens we'll be working in today. First one is in front of us, the QuickBooks desktop program. As you can see, I'm using QuickBooks Desktop Pro 2019. As long as your version is 2014 and above, you'll have no problems posting donations into QuickBooks Desktop. Now, we will also be working on Exceed Further. The interface itself is here. This will be installed locally on your C drive. And uh, this is an intermediate piece that connects our cloud product, Exceed Further and Exceed Beyond, to QuickBooks. Okay, let's take a look first at the QuickBooks side of things. In QuickBooks, you will need to make sure you are using items and classes. A QuickBooks item is simply a code that uh, is linked to one of your income accounts. And a class is, if you're familiar with class tracking, it's usually a program at your organization that you're going to fund. So in, in my demo database, here, I just have an administration fund and a building fund. You will need to make sure that you are using account numbers. If you go to edit preferences, accounting, company preferences, make sure use account numbers is turned on. And if I bring up the chart of accounts, you can see that we're using account numbers. Our system needs to reference an account number, not just a name. So if you don't have those account numbers turned on, go ahead and turn them on now. That's it for the QuickBooks side of things. Now let's go to Exceed Further or Beyond. In Exceed Further, you need to go to your administration panel. And under codes, under gift, we have two key codes that you need to make sure you are using because we're going to map them to the QuickBooks items and classes that we just looked at. The Exceed Further or Beyond credit code is going to be linked to your QuickBooks item. The Exceed Further or Beyond Fund code is going to be mapped to your QuickBooks class. We'll do that in a minute. In addition to having a credit code and a fund code attached to each donation that you want to post into QuickBooks Desktop, you also need to make sure you have a batch code created. To access batch codes, uh, we go to Gifts and Pledges Batch Manager. As you can see, this is a list of all my current batches that I've done. To create a new batch for the day, you can click the Add button. It'll ask you what kind of batch you are creating. This is a batch of gifts. The batch name that you give it can be up to 10 characters. I see a lot of people using today's date. And then if they are going to have multiple batches in a day, you can do dash A, B, C. Some organizations like the batch gifts into one batch, pledges might go into another. And if you're a membership organization, you might put all your dues into a third separate batch. Otherwise, you can just put all your gifts into one batch. We will give it a batch date. The expected amount. Generally, if you have multiple gifts, you would add up all the donations that should be part of this batch and you put the cumulative amount into the expected. For today's purposes, I'm just going to keep it simple and add one gift of $100. I'm going to check the set as current box. That way, every donation that I add going forward will be tagged with this batch code. Now I'm going to click save and add a gift. This takes me directly into the adding a new gift screen where I can search for my donor. I will work with my demo donor, Johnny Steele. I'm going to put in the amount. Now, it's really important to make sure you choose the correct credit code. So this will be contribution from individual and the proper fund code. This is going to support my building fund. So every donation needs to have the credit code, the fund code, and the batch code filled in. Otherwise, when you try to post, you will get an error. I'm going to save this. Once you're done entering your batches for the day, you can highlight the batch. You'll click Export to QB. This creates a CSV file in your default download directory, which is downloads for me. 
launch the QuickBooks interface. I have this handy shortcut on my desktop that I would, would double click. I already have it open. And if I bring it up, it has a posting maintenance screen, which allows you to see all the posts that you've, you've made so far, which this is a fresh install, so it's blank. But before we do anything here, we have to import that CSV file because we need to do some mapping. We need to map the codes that were associated with the gift on the further side. Uh, we need to map it to those QuickBooks codes. So let me click import. It's going to ask me to locate the file. I will hit locate. The default location will, will just be your exceed beyond or exceed further to QuickBooks interface folder. But since that CSV file is in my download folder, I will change my directory to downloads. And here is my batch for today. I'm going to hit open, click OK. And this lets you know that this particular batch contains $100 you want to continue, I will say yes. Before we can post this to QuickBooks, we have to go to the account setup tab. And here we have to make a few decisions. The first is to tell the system what to do with the donors from the exceed further side. If you choose post all entries in detail, which most people do, it will take the donor from exceed further and put them into the QuickBooks customer list. Now, if you don't want your further donors to be imported into QuickBooks into your customer list, you can click edit and choose post summary entries only, or you have the option to post summary entries for all donations under a certain amount, let's say 250. So then the only donors that would come into your customer list on the QuickBooks side would be people who have given over 250. Now, it's just been my experience that most people like to see the, the, the full detail of the donor on the QuickBooks side. It's also a nice thing to update the donor address, just so you know that the, the address in both systems are going to be the same. I recommend leaving the link items to give credit codes selected. And if you are going to be posting pledges, uh, you need to choose a receivable account for those pledges to go into. So I will choose my default pledges receivable and click save. So that's step one is just kind of choosing some administrative settings. Step two is to go through the mapping process. So let's go to the funds programs. So this code on the left is the code that I imported from exceed further. Now we have to map this code to the QuickBooks class. So I will click edit. And since I'm directly connected to QuickBooks, I'm going to choose fund, building fund, save that. I will go to the credits tab now and I will map my credit code to my QuickBooks item, save that. Next, the payment method codes, I'm going to map cash donation to cash and hit save. And that's all you have to do for this part of the setup. Now that we've mapped all these codes, we can go back to the posting maintenance. We can highlight the batch we want to post. First, we want to put in today's date. If you double click in the QuickBooks transaction date field, it will put today's date. And now we can post this batch. One thing that people like to do before they post is the print just to make sure everything looks good. Okay, we have the right item, we have the right class, we have the right amount. Okay, it's unposted, great. Now I can click post. And if I go to QuickBooks, the first time you post a donation to QuickBooks, it will give you this warning message saying this program, and it names our product, would like to post information into QuickBooks, do you wanna allow this? And you can just click yes, whenever QuickBooks is open, continue, confirm, are you sure you wanna allow access? Yes, okay, this looks good, I will hit done. Now it's working, 
posted one transaction to QuickBooks. Now, if if this batch had 100 donations, it would have told you posted 100 transactions to QuickBooks. I will hit OK. The next step would be to lock this batch so no one can accidentally post it again. But before you lock a batch, we recommend going to QuickBooks and just making sure everything came over into the right accounts. Now we can go to QuickBooks and make sure that the transaction went to the right place. So let's launch QuickBooks. And we will go to Banking Make Deposits. And here we have our $100 gift, Johnny Steele. And uh, now we can hit OK. So this is going to go from undeposited funds into you select your bank account. This has our batch number. So you can always, uh, if you ever need to reconcile, you can do a search in your memo for the batch code. And let me just adjust this. And I will hit save and close. And now if I bring up my customer list and look at Johnny Steele, we can see this is the one that we just posted, number 213. And if we open it, yeah, here's our batch that we just posted. Everything looks good. Now that we've confirmed that the, the batch went to the proper place in QuickBooks, we can go back to the interface. We can highlight the batch and then we can lock it. All right, this just warns you that you can't post this again. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And that's it. Now, the final step is to go back to exceed further. And now we can lock the batch here. So as you can see, the two systems are not directly connected. You have to do the export from exceed further, creates that CSV file that you didn't bring into the interface. So the locking needs to happen on both sides. And that concludes today's session on posting donations from Exceed Further into QuickBooks Desktop. Thanks for joining.